The time has come at last to discuss a mystery. And that mystery is what is a differential? You've seen these things before, but it has been left unanswered. What exactly is dx? We use dx all the time, dx, dy, all these things. What is it? Well, let's think, let's brainstorm. What might dx actually be? Is it, you ask, an infinitesimal? Why, yes, it is an infinitesimal. That's a great way to think about it. But what does that mean? Infinitesimals are not some abstraction or idealization. They are actual things. You can actually define them. And they're so beautiful. Oh my gosh, it's such a lovely theory. But to actually do the definitions? Ooh, that requires transcending from the reals to the hyperreals. And it's, oh my gosh, it's complicated. We can't go there. We need a different way of thinking about what dx is. So, maybe it's a rate of change. dx is just like how fast x is changing. Well, you can think in those terms. That's okay. That can be helpful in many contexts. But that's not really what dx is. So what else can we do? Is there anything else that we can use to say what dx is? What's that? I'm sorry. Did I hear you ask if dx is really just a one-form field on the real line? Why, yes, that's it. That's exactly right. But what exactly does that mean? Well, it will be a pleasure to explain that to you in the future. Far into the future, we will learn that differentials are really one-form fields. But to appreciate what that means, we're going to need all of multivariable calculus. It's going to take a long time to get there. There's no way we can do that now. So what are we going to do? We're going to think of all three of these interpretations and use them in different contexts, depending on what is helpful. If we've got a curve and we want to think about the slope of the tangent line, we put in this little infinitesimal triangle and we compute the base, which is length dx, the height, which is dy. These are both infinitesimal quantities. And the slope, of course, is dy divided by dx. Are you allowed to do that? Yes. If you're working with infinitesimals, and we have set up the notation to make it so that that works well. Are we going to think about dx in terms of rates of change? Oh, absolutely. Let's say that we have a relationship between two quantities. Let's say u equals x squared. I can think about the rate of change of u as being du. And what is that in terms of x? Well, you know, it's 2x dx. And we can use that to solve related rates, problems, all that kind of stuff. In fact, this kind of looks like what we do when we do substitution. Remember, you substitution for integrals? That's kind of got something to do with these differentials. And in fact, that's a hint as to what I mean by dx being a one-form field. dx is... An integrand, it's something that wants to be integrated from A to B. If we integrate dx from A to B, then what we're really doing is taking the antiderivative x and then evaluating that from A to B. Later on in this course, we're going to think about this action. We're going to think about these types of things that want to be integrated as differential elements. And it's going to be a very important part of our story. But for now, we're not going to worry so much about the formal definition of what dx is. Rather, we're going to use dx and other differentials in a number of different contexts to solve different types of problems. I don't want you to ignore the definitions. No, no, that's an important part of mathematics. But in this one case of differentials, you're going to have to be willing to play with a couple of different interpretations and wait for a formal definition till later in the journey.